So welcome back everybody. Today's episode, I'm actually going to do a little on-course vlog, but there's going to be a slight twist to it. Because I'm not playing against anybody, I'm actually going to talk through what goes through my mind with every single shot that I'm about to play. If you want to find out what I do on the golf course and how it might improve your game, then make sure to stay tuned for the rest of the video. So to start off with, we have a very difficult hole. It's the eighth hole here at Great Bar Golf Club. It's a par for 440 yards. This hole has a bunker just down the right hand side. However, it opens up slightly wider fairway just after that bunker, which is roughly around the sort of 240 yards mark. So the reason behind me hitting driver is the fact that the fairway is actually a lot larger there than it is from shorter distance back. So rather than just hitting a four iron for safety and keeping my ball in play, I'm gonna hit my driver because the fairway is a lot larger in size. Alongside this is a long hole, so the last thing I wanna be doing is hitting about 200 yards left in. If I can leave myself around the 140-ish mark, that'll be a really nice shot. I could pull my pitching wedge out and hopefully try and land the ball nice and softly on the green. So what do I do when I come to playing this hole? Well, actually, I'm gonna set my ball up just on the right hand side of the tee box area and the reason that I actually set it up on the right hand side is the fact that for me I want to try and make that hitting area as wide as possible you might notice on the left hand side of the actual tee box area we have this tree that sort of sticks out if I tee up down the left and try and play a fade I'm actually limiting the amount of space that I've got to hit my shot and bringing that tree into play a little bit so you'll notice that the tees are almost tucked over a little bit more to the left hand side makes it slightly trickier However, I still want to play that fadey feeling because I want to get away from the outer bounds down the left-hand side. Everything slopes from right to left, so realistically, if I hit the right-hand side of the fairway, it will bounce down to the left-hand side anyway. So anywhere down that left-hand side is a good shot for me. So what I'm going to do is just have a couple of practice swings to start us off. I always like to have a couple of practice swings because I'm just trying to ingrain um, my certain shot shape that I'm trying to feel. So for me, I like to try and play a fade. It might not result in a, a fade shot. It might actually be a straight ball flight. I might even draw it if I hit a bad one, but at the same time, I'm still trying to get that feeling of playing a fade. Right then, so a couple of little practice swings. Hey, one more. Right, and now I'm ready to go. So I mean, I couldn't have really hit that one any better. I've just gone down the left side of the fairway and like I said, because that fairway is slightly wider down there, I've still hit the fairway. Even though it'll be in the, the semi-rough, it's fine in that position. It always leaves you a shot to the green. So try when you're out on the course, plot your way around. Don't just take driver off every single tee because it's the right club for you. If the fairway was wider at 230, I might potentially not pull driver out the bag and just try and put my ball in the 230 spot. But let's make our way down and see what shot I've got left into the green. So my ball's finished in the rough down the left-hand side of the fairway. This is actually a really good shot. Even though I'm in the rough, it really opens up the green for me. Like I said, anywhere down the left is a great shot on this hole. So the first thing I like to do is actually stand to the left of my golf ball. I'm gonna bushnell the flag. So I've got 143 yards left to the flag. For me, it's playing slightly uphill. However, I actually want to land this ball slightly short of the hole. So it's going to probably play around that 143 yard mark. I can either hit a full pitching wedge, 140 yard carry, or I can play a knock down nine iron. For me, I always like taking more club and knocking it down rather than trying to smash my pitching wedge, 140 yard, three yard carry. So no real point to that. I'm going to try and play that knock down nine iron. You'll also notice that there's a slight slope to this hole. So the ball is going to be fractionally above my feet. This means that the ball's going to turn over to the left a little bit. So for me, when I come to playing this shot, I'm going to try and play that knock down nine iron, but I'm going to try and hold the face off for as long as physically possible. Uh, you can alternatively aim to the right hand side of the flag and just try and let the slope drift it back towards the hole. But for me, I'm going to play knock down nine iron, see how close I can get this shot. So I'm going to give it a go, see how I get on. So again, in between every shot, I like to take my glove off, just let it air off a little bit, because again, it is a nice hot day today. So the last thing I want to do is keep my glove on for the whole round. I'll always take it off and then put it back on just as I'm about to hit my shot. And the reason I like to do that is almost like a sort of trigger for me that when I do put that glove on, it's a case I need to really concentrate over the shot that I've got. So when I'm playing this shot again, I'm looking for two little practice swings. Again, for me, trying to really ingrain that feeling 
that I'm going to try and hold that ball off as much as possible. So again, let's see if I can get a good strike off on this. So it's perfect. Go on. This is good. Go on. Oh, it's even bounce left. Brilliant shot. I must be super close to the hole. I don't know how far I'm going to have left. But I played the shot exactly how I tried to play. It might not come off every single time, but at the same time, I want to give myself the best possible chance. So I'm going to go up and see how close my birdie put is. So the ball is probably fed on slightly longer than I first expected. I was expecting it to be a little bit closer than that. So a bit disappointed. However, it is a tough hole. It's a 440 yard par four. It's not the easiest hole in the world. And I've still got a nice birdie opportunity from this position. So what I'm going to do, I actually like to mark my ball Every single time my ball's on the green, always mark it up. I always like to give my ball a little bit of a clean. And the reason behind that is I don't like putting with a dirty ball and I don't want there to be loads of mud and stuff on the golf ball, which might affect the roll. So I always like to mark it up. I've used a tee peg today. Usually I would use a ball marker. However, I'm playing on my own. I'm just using a tee peg. So what I'll do from this position now is just try and scope out what the green's actually doing. I like to actually have a look from different angles. So I'll walk round slightly. For me, what I tend to see is that this is a left to right breaking putt. It's all about the pace of the putt as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line my ball up. I like to use the tailor-made logo on the ball, or you can alternatively draw a line on the ball as well to try and get it rolling down that line. What I've done here is just set it up slightly left to the hole. Got to really think about how hard I'm going to hit this putt. So I'm lining the line up on the back of my putter to the actual tailor-made logo on the ball. All I'm thinking about is how hard I've got to hit this putt. So again, can I get it nice and close? If it goes in, great. Go on, go on, go on. Didn't quite get it. Probably hit it a fraction too hard, but it's left me, myself a really nice putt backwards. And again, I like to take note, once the ball's gone past the hole, it still moves a little bit from left to right, so I know already that the putt back is going to be a little bit right to left. So I'm going to hit that putt in, and then I'm going to move on to the next hole. So nice, easy, solid four on that hole. Let's move on to the next, the ninth hole, sh short little par four. So that's one thing from the last hole I see tons of people not taking into account is the fact that once they miss that first put, they're almost like, oh, I missed it. Don't worry about it, watch where the ball moves. It's so important to really take note of that because it can give you a really good indication of the next put that you're gonna have backwards. Right, so like I said, really short par four, 307 yards. I'm going to give it a go at trying to actually drive the ball quite close to the green because it's going to leave me a nice little short chip shot. Alternatively, if I wanted to try and leave a safety shot, what I'd try and do is just play up short of the bunkers and play one on. But because I can get the ball there, I might as well give it a go at trying to hit my driver. So I'll grab my driver and see where we get on with this one. So again, what I'm looking for with this shot, I've got to get it up and over the trees. So... For me, it's a slight dog leg right. Again, I like to tee up to the right hand side of the tee box area because I'm trying to encourage that fadey feeling. All right, so I'm trying to get cutting across it slightly because if it does move from left to right, I'm going to hit a good ball flight. So very bright, sun into eyes here as well. I'm going to give it a shot, try and just get a good contact, a little bit of movement to the right. Again, two little practice swings. Really trying to encourage that slightly moving right feeling. I'll tell you what, go on, that's a good strike, has it got there, it might not have got there but I'm going to be very close, it's going to leave me a nice little short chip shot, we can give it a go at trying to up and down, like I said this hole realistically play to your strengths, if you're good from 100 yards hit a 200 yard shot and leave yourself 100 in, for me I want to give myself the best opportunity of making birdie on this hole, it's probably a really good chance, so I'm trying to hit my driver as close to the green as possible. So you can probably just see my ball down here. My ball's finished nice and close to the green, so it's left me a nice short shot. So the shot that I'm gonna try and play is a little short chip shot. I need to try and land it on the front left-hand side of the green. And the reason behind that is because I haven't got much green to work with. It's sloping slightly left to right. 
I'm almost going to try and keep this ball as low as possible to the ground. I don't want it going super high. I want it to try and land on the front edge of the green and feed up towards the hole. So the way that I'm going to try and play this shot, what I like to try and do is keep my feet nice and close together, probably roughly around a club's width apart. I try and have my chest and head in front of the golf ball. What I'll do then is try and keep my arms nice and straight and it almost feels like, again, I'm slightly cutting across the ball. That's my feeling when I come to playing these shots. Again, I'll take two little practice swings. I'll slightly grip down the golf club. So again, my feeling's gonna be that I'm gripping down ever so slightly. Nice straight arms and just pushing up. So again, can I get it landed on the front? So landed it on the front. Go on, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Nearly, all right, so it gives me again a really great birdie opportunity. I know the putt that I'm about to have is gonna be slightly uphill left to right. I've left myself the best possible chance. The last thing I wanted to do, even got a squirrel checking out my great shot, but the last thing that I wanted to do was actually race that ball miles past the flag and leave myself a downhill sloping putt. Give yourself a nice easy uphill putt. Again, it's a really good birdie opportunity. So I've actually not got long left in at all. It's probably around a, a three, four footer. It's not long left. Again, I like to mark my ball. Try and aim my ball slightly left to the hole because I know it's going to move slightly from left to right because I watched the way that my chip broke. From here, all I'm looking for is a nice positive putt just to the left-hand side of the hole. Perfect. Nice, easy birdie. Played it nice and sensibly. That's one out of the two birdies that I've made. I've never really looked like making anything worse than a par at this position. 10th hole, 348 yard par four. So the hole that I've got in front of me is, isn't long, all right, but at the same time, I'm one under par. I don't want to just pull out drive for the sake of just trying to drive greens. I want to keep my ball in play as much as possible. If I hit an iron, I can still leave myself a nice short shot in. Again, realistically, if I can leave myself around 140 yards, that would be perfect. And the reason behind that is the fact that at roughly 120 yards left into the green, the water cuts in slightly to the right-hand side, so I actually want to be short of the water. I don't want to hit a club that's going to go long of that. So if I leave myself 120 yards in, I would have probably hit something like a four iron. I don't want to hit that club. For me, I'm going to choose a shorter club, something like a six or a seven iron, because if I leave myself around that 150-yard mark, I can still hit the green and give myself the best possible birdie opportunity, but I'm reducing the chances of actually making bogey. I see so many people just pulling out the wrong club selection on this hole because, again, they're trying to just hit a club that goes the longest distance possible. Play yourself short of the water and then play a shot onto the green. There's no point just trying to hit it hard because the fairway really reduces in size down there. Give yourself the widest fairway possible. So I'm going to hit a six iron and just see how we get on down there. So again, what I'm doing now is setting up down the right-hand side again. Because my feel is almost that fadey feeling, I'm really setting up to the right-hand side. If I was a drawer of the golf ball, I'd probably set up somewhere down the left-hand side. But for me, I'm setting up down the right, trying to get that feeling that I'm moving it to the right slightly. So let's hit a shot, see how far we can get down there. Really sitting looking for around 140 yards. Let's give it a go. Again, two practice swings really feeling like for me i'm trying to move that ball over to the right hand side in there something great strike on it go on then sit down short of that water perfect i mean if I was to hit 10 of those i guarantee you 10 10 out of 10 times i'm more than likely going to hit the fairway realistically i shouldn't be missing this huge fairway with a six iron whereas if i pull my drive right it really really narrows up down the top end and i'm more than likely going to put my ball in the ditch one or two times so there's just no need get yourself in play give yourself a birdie opportunity as many times as possible so the ball's just finished down the right hand side of the fairway before the water because again like i said i chose the six iron to really keep it short of that lake i didn't want the ball going anywhere near it even if I'd gone a bit harder on the six iron, it still would have fallen short of the water. So the tree that I've got in front of me isn't going to be a problem because I can easily get it up and over there from this position. I'm going to bushel my ball, uh, bushel the flag, sorry. I've got 149 yards to the flag. So again, the flag's going to be roughly front middle. The wind is slightly, let's have a look, slightly with. So 149, 150 yards. It's a very similar shot to the eight shot I've got. I could play a knockdown nine iron. 
However, because of the tree and the reason I want to get easily up and over it, I'm going to play my pitching wedge because even if I fall slightly short and land it at 140 yards, it's going to feed forward. So anything that I do on this position, I know it's going to really see hit the green as long as I keep it nice and straight. So I'm going to grab my pitching wedge and see if I can play that shot. So realistically, this tree almost acts as a nice visual guide to where I want to try and hit my shot. The ball is slightly above my feet again, so it's more than likely going to drift a little bit to the left-hand side. So can I play this nice high shot that goes nice and straight towards the green and feeds up towards the flag? So again, two little practice swings, trying to feel like I'm really holding that ball off as much as possible. And then I'm going to hit my shot. Tell you what, I've struck it, it looks all over it. Go on. Go on. Couldn't have played that any better. My ball's finished nice and close to the flag. I think I've got roughly 10, 12 foot, so not long left at all. Again, it's an easy birdie opportunity, and I didn't even have to pull my driver out the bag. Position yourself around, it's the biggest thing I can say. Don't just smack driver, you don't need to. I've hit a six iron pitching wedge to about 12 foot. It's another birdie chance, I could go two under now. So the ball's actually finished up in a really good position. It's a lot closer than I first thought it was. So I'm just gonna mark the ball up, give it a quick clean. I'm gonna line the ball up again, slightly left of the hole. So I know that the slope of the green is almost, it's higher at this side than it is that side. Again, if I was to fill the cup up with water, uh, the ball would start to, or the water would start to run down this side. So I'm gonna aim it slightly left of the hole. In terms of the shot that I'm about to have, I'm really concentrating on the pace of put. I need it to go uphill and slightly move from left to right hand side. So again, really important shot this is. This is to go two under par. Can I get that nice roll on the ball and hold that put? Straight in the hole. Perfect, that puts me to two under par, but at the same time, it's simple. I'm not doing anything miraculous. I'm plotting my way around the golf course and it results in lower scores. Right, so I'm gonna play one last hole and this is gonna be the 11th hole. And for me, this is probably one of the harder holes on the golf course. And the reason behind that is it's dog leg left. And it's around 380 yards. So dog leg left, you can't really see where you're going. And the reason for me I don't like those shots is because I don't wanna just smash driver and not know where my ball's landed. I'm actually gonna hit a three iron and keep my ball in play. Even if it means I've got a longer shot left in for my next shot, I'd rather have a longer shot than hit driver and not know where my ball's gone. For me, I'm, I'm a real strong believer of play what you can see. So for me, what I can see down here, it does move right to left slightly. So if I can go down to the right-hand side of the fairway, it'd be a really nice golf shot. So I'm gonna pull my three iron out. I'm looking roughly to get around 230, 240. Again, it's a real positional shot because I'm trying to leave myself, if I'm gonna leave myself 170 left into the flag, I know for a fact it will be a good shot. I almost try and work backwards a lot of times when I'm on the golf course, almost see how long the hole is, try and work out what I want left into the flag. Ideally, yeah, I'd love 120 yards, but at the same time, it does get quite tight up there. Give myself a nice percentage shot that I can see where my ball finishes. I know for a fact I'm gonna have a shot at the green. Rather than trying to hit driver, I could keep it too straight and go into the trees at the back. This way, I know I'm going to have a second shot at the green. So we'll give it a go. I'm going to get my three iron out. Right, so got my three iron now and all I'm looking for, again, I've teed it up down the right hand side and my feeling again, can I move it to the right? All right, can I start it towards the left hand side where the trees almost stick out and move it back to the position I want my ball to finish in. If it doesn't and goes straight, all right, it'll be a nice straight shot. If it moves left, it is a bad shot. So again, two little practice swings, really getting that feeling. I'm moving it to the right-hand side. Right, can I get a good strike off now? Great strike. Sit down then, don't go too far. So it's a good shot. So I'm going to have roughly around 150 left in. If I'd hit anything more than that club, I'd be in the trees because it went too straight and didn't start far enough to the left-hand side. I get away with it though, because I've got more room to play with. So that is the reason why you should plot your way around the golf course. We'll move up now and see what shot I've got left in for my second. So my ball's actually finished in a really good position. It's opened up the green from this side. I've got a tree slightly in front of me, 
But again, because I'm firing a back, it should give me a good chance. I have got, for the flag, 154 yards, so 154. The flag's slightly towards the back. Wind is pretty still. It might be fractionally into. So realistically, already 154, slightly into. I'm either hitting a full nine iron or a knockdown eight. For me, I'm gonna play a knockdown eight because realistically, if I hit anything middle of the green, I know for a fact I'm gonna give myself a good birdie opportunity. And even still, if not, I want that two put. Can I move on to the next hole after giving myself a good chance? Don't want to do anything stupid in this position. So again, knockdown eight, I think, will be perfect. So I'm going to grab my eight iron and give it a go. So all about control with this sort of shot. What I'm looking for here, again, that little bit of right, left to right movement, if I can. Can I play it almost just to the right-hand side of that bunker and move it a little touch further to the right-hand side? You'll just see the sticky out tree that I've got here. The flag's just positioned behind that. I'm just trying to go slightly to the left of that and move it to the right. Realistically, this is plenty of club, so as long as I knock it down, I know I've got enough club in my hands. We'll give it a go, see if I can give myself a good chance. So started it a fraction to right. It's on the green, but it's nowhere near the hole, really. Again, from where I am, it's gonna to have to be a good two put. Same time, it never really looked in danger of making anything worse than a par. But hopefully, uh, you never know, I might even get this first put in. So my ball's just finished back to the right hand side of the flag. So it's right to the back of the green. However, this flag's blue, which means it's at the back. What you'll tend to see lots of people doing is not taking enough club. I see this happen so many times. And realistically, me taking that eight iron, I knew I had enough club. Whereas I see a lot of people almost going, right, I know it's 150 yards. If I just smack a pitching wedge, what will happen is you'll probably land on the green, but you're going to be short, you're going to be towards the front area. Realistically, I've given myself a chance of getting it as close to the hole as possible. It wasn't a great shot, but at the same time, I'm still on the green, and I'm still pretty much in line with the flag. I'm just a bit too far to the right-hand side. So I've got a tricky put. It's uphill, right to left braking. It's not easy at all. However, I'm taking into account which way it's going to move. What I'm looking for again here is my start line position. It's going to be somewhere to the right. For me, I picked out at almost that really spiky tree that I can see in the distance. I'm going to line my ball up towards that. If I can hit my ball towards there, it should move back to the left-hand side and give myself a chance at a par opportunity. All right, really, it's still a good birdie. Up. Every put that you've got, you've got to think that you've got a chance of holding. If you don't, you're almost worrying about a three put already. Try and hold that first put. If I can, even better. If I can't, can I make sure that that second put is going to be nice and easy to hit? Right, all about the pace. Uphill, right to left. It's a good roll. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Fraction short, ever so slightly short. If it was a touch harder, I think it would have gone in. Uh, let's tap it in. Nice and simple though. Again, it's a par. What I've done is played four holes, two under par, never really looked like making anything worse than a par. It was nice and simple, plotted my way around the golf course. Hopefully guys, you've enjoyed watching the video and you might have learned something from me playing that you didn't already know. If you did, hit me down in the comment section below and let me know what it was. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and comment on the video as well for your chance of winning a brand new tailor-made sim driver because again, as soon as I get to 5,000 subscribers, I'm gonna do that giveaway. So make sure to subscribe to the channel, please. So guys, thanks so much for watching the video and I'll see you all again next week.